So uh, welcome to my talk, which is layer re dependent regional homogeneity. It's an abstract number 3124. Um, oops. Yes, uh, so I have nothing to declare. Uh, to start with uh, regional homogeneity is in fMRI literature. Uh, it's, it's a measure that uh, ranks the similarity between the neighboring voxels uh, given uh, faces, edges, or corners. And if you have a center voxel and then it's purely Cartesian and um, free of anatomical constraints, you just extract the neighboring voxels and see how similar they are. And based on that, you just color code the, uh, the uh, fMRI um, data. Uh, but with the increased resolution and the layer dependent interest, uh, the, we see more and we, we know more about the anatomy, where is the gray matter, pile surface, white matter, and then that will be kind of uh, uh, overseen detail. And uh, in this study, we want to uh, give some anatomical constraints. So imagine you have uh, time courses extracted in a certain cortical depth, and we just want to look at just those signals instead of the neighbors. So this is basically the core of this study. And with the help of Laney software, you just, um, uh, of course, with the uh, rigorous anatomical and uh, segmentation, you just have a ROI in a given cortical uh, patch. And then you can go uh, by depth by depth with this called layer bins and then extract the time courses. And then uh, you look at the, how similar they are. And this is the similarity matrix of each cortical depth and Based on that, you just collapse the similarity matrix and then you have weight, which uh, indicates that if that given voxel is contributing to the laminar signal, which is high, and then if it's not, it's low. And based on that, we just color code with this very uh, um, uh, spatially confined region. So how is this different from the traditional regional homogeneity? Um, in traditional regional homogeneity, on the left, you see the whole brain. Um, so it, it is kind of a gray, gray matter toned uh, um, 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 activity, but one can also segment it, which is layer is layer regional homogeneity is calculated on the left. The first difference between the second and the third image is the am amplified amplitude, but that's not the only difference. Uh, if you look at closer structure changes too, and that lies be, be, because of the um, local dynamics. So if you look at this line here, for example, I want to emphasize that, and th there is a similarity on this cortical uh, 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 signals, which is not similar in the neighbors, which is overseen in traditional reho, which just looks at the neighbors. But in our case, we just give an um, a priority to the to the certain cortical depth. In this case, it has survived. So this is kind of important for layer studies uh, that this. Um, local and sensitive time information should be kept. Uh, further, if you look at the um, global changes, uh, we started to see some uh, structures in the noisy areas called like insula temporal lobe. And if you're curious why those areas are noisy in this um, kind of acquisitions, please check the poster number 3129, which is just five uh, computers nearby me. Uh, next, we were curious about how this uh, homogeneity can um, um, grab the activity. For this purpose, um, and this data is acquired by Professor Young as it is uh, four fingers are uh, stimulated uh, tactilely. And then on the left, you see a percent CBV change, which you can appreciate there's a line of activity within cortical gray matter. Um, and on the right is the uh, layer reho. Uh, so they look like quite aligned. And of course, we check other subjects on the left. You see the Reho and the CBV values. Um, uh, they're, they're pretty in line. If you look at the correlation of those uh, percent CBV change and the, uh, and the, and the Reho values, uh, it's mostly regional dependent, but it grabs pretty uh, good alignment. Um, Next, we, uh, we looked at this, uh, we applied this method with publicly available whole brain data set, which is a, a massive data set of 50 runs. It's like five runs each, um, each session, uh, about 10 days acquisition. So it is a very good data set for 
test retest reliability, uh, which is shown in the study. And if you do this with, with the layer reho, so like run two two runs picked up here on the left and right, run A and run B, and you, you can appreciate they're pretty uh, similar with the layer reho. Uh, particularly if you zoom in the areas like auditory cortex and uh, occipital areas, which are uh, engaged activity during movie watching. Um, last but not least, uh, we also looked at the across whole runs, uh, global similarities um, in two different contrasts available in this data set, bold versus vaso. And uh, first thing, the similarity values are really high. Um, so and it's um, apparently like a movie related activity. And we, we also see um, some structure that is related with the, how data acquired. So it, it is like chunks of uh, five uh, runs uh, each day. Um, and if you look at the similarities across 50 runs, you can even spot on non-similar ones, which might be helpful for us to just, you know, um, carefully select the, which data set to use to increase SNR um, to average across runs for this uh, noisy uh, regime. Um, to conclude, um, so the cortical depth dependent regional homogeneity can pick up very local confined activity. And uh, this is shown in like in, in uh, available data set, um, high spatial resemblance with uh, finger activation and also the movie watching data set. And uh, with that, I would like to thank my colleagues and I will be happy if you have any questions.